Looking at the magnificence and power wrapped in symbols that have endured through time, whether they're gods from myths, mighty pharaohs, or technological wonders that have changed history. While we often think of Egypt as the earliest civilization, modern research now suggests the existence of an ancient civilization that thrived between India and Pakistan before these well-known cultures. In the heart of ancient times, a civilization emerged, a prime example of urban strength and cultural importance. It's called the Indus Valley Civilization, or the Harappan Civilization. Flourishing along the Indus River and its branches, it covered areas that now comprise modern-day Pakistan, India, Afghanistan, and Iran. This story spans from around 3000 BC to 1500 BC, with its peak occurring between 2500 and 2000 BC. This civilization is renowned for its impressive city planning, stunning architecture, advanced sanitation systems, extensive trade networks, mysterious writing, and expressive art. However, amidst its achievements, there remains a mystery about how it began, declined, and interacted with other cultures. One intriguing theory suggests that the Indus Valley Civilization might have met its end due to a nuclear catastrophe. The notion of an ancient nuclear conflict in India's history originates from two main sources, the ancient Sanskrit epic, the Mahabharata, and discoveries at specific Indus sites. The Mahabharata is a complex blend of history and mythology that weaves the cultural tapestry of ancient India. It highlights the Kurukshetra War, a massive battle among royal relatives. Some passages in this epic oddly resemble the destructive power of modern nuclear weapons. One of them says that a single weapon charged with cosmic power, a radiant column of smoke, and fire shining like many suns, an unknown weapon made of iron, turned a whole lineage into ash. Their bodies turned into unrecognizable remains. Even their hairs and nails were gone. Vessels shattered without explanation, and birds turned white. Food became inedible. Warriors had to jump into a river to escape the fire. Researchers interpret these lines as potentially describing a nuclear explosion a way of interpreting intense heat, radiation, shock waves, and the aftermath of radioactivity. Other parts of the Mahabharata discuss weapons capable of obliterating cities, armies, and even continents, causing earthquakes, floods, storms, darkness, and diseases. Archaeological evidence also contributes to the puzzle. Two crucial sites from the Indus Valley Civilization, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, exhibit signs of sudden and violent occurrences. In the 1920s and 1930s, these sites unveiled not only advanced city structures and artifacts, but also clues hinting at a dramatic ending. At Mohenjo-Daro, there's a layer of radioactive ash covering an area of three square miles. Interestingly, scattered skeletons are also found in the streets, some even in a final embrace, and some skeletons even showed higher radiation levels. Additionally, some artifacts show signs of melting or turning into glass due to high temperatures. Similar clues emerge from Harappa. Layers of radioactive ash, skeletons, and melted artifacts are present here as well. Moreover, many human bones are scattered along the nearby Ravi River. Some speculate that these bones could be from people who sought refuge in the river while attempting to escape a nuclear event. Supporters of the ancient nuclear war theory employ these clues to weave a narrative of ancient people wielding powerful technology, possibly nuclear. They propose that either the Indus Valley Civilization possessed advanced atomic weapons, or another unnamed culture attacked them. Other anomalies, like Lona Crater near Bombay, a circular hole not caused by a volcano, or the radioactive material in Rajasthan soil linked to the Kurukshetra War, further bolster this theory. However, an alternative perspective exists. Some critics do not consider that a nuclear war happened in Mahabharata. They argue that the epic's blend of history, myths, and poetry makes it challenging to interpret everything literally. They argue that passages with nuclear-like descriptions might be allegorical or exaggerated. The indications of a nuclear explosion in Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa could have natural explanations too such as the presence of uranium and thorium in the Earth. Skeletal remains might simply be from diverse eras and situations, including those of animals. 
Melted artifacts may not have resulted from fires, but rather from ordinary human craftsmanship. Furthermore, alternative arguments come to light. The lunar crater appears to have been caused by a space rock impact, not a human-made bomb. The radioactive material in Rajasthan could be the result of natural geological processes. Unlike being concentrated in specific spots, this radioactive material spreads across the land. Additionally, the people from that time would not have been associated with this radioactivity. They present a counter-argument against the perceived implications of the objects showing signs of melting or vitrification, attributing these phenomena to either natural processes or human activities. Their explanation emphasizes that these objects could have been made from materials with low melting points, such as copper or bronze. Furthermore, they emphasize that similar objects with these attributes are not limited to these specific sites. Instead, they are found across various distant regions and cultures, spanning from Egypt to Mesopotamia. The narrative they construct offers different possibilities. These objects might be the results of skilled metalwork, pottery or glassmaking. Alternatively, they suggest that these artifacts might have been affected by fire, erosion or simply the passage of time. In their skeptical viewpoint, they draw attention to additional evidence related to India's ancient nuclear warfare. The lunar crater, or geological wonder, receives unanimous approval from geologists as proof of a meteorite impact. They observe the details of its shape, size and composition, presenting a description that aligns cohesively with this explanation. Moreover, they highlight the absence of any human activity or settlement in the area indicating that the crater's formation likely occurred without human involvement. The presence of radioactive ash in Rajasthan also succumbs to their reasoned analysis. These scholars emphasize that this ash originates from weathered rocks and soil containing uranium and thorium. They dispel the mystery surrounding its distribution, noting that it spreads broadly across the landscape rather than being concentrated in specific areas. Their insights emphasize the lack of any human presence, causing debates about the ash's origin. Traveling to the heart of Rajasthan in northwest India, archaeologists made a remarkable discovery. 700 kilometers distant, a layer of radioactive dust embedded in the ancient soil. This finding, located just 700 kilometers away from the mysterious Mohenjo-Dara site, raises questions about the possibility of a radioactive cloud traveling such a distance. Additionally, within Mohenjo-Daro itself, there are signs of radiation. Scientists measured the radiation levels in the remains of skeletons and found that they were 50 times higher than normal. This discovery becomes even more intriguing when considering the ancient Indian epic, the Mahabharata. The epic contains descriptions of a powerful explosion that outshone the sun and was capable of destroying entire realms. When these elements are considered together, it seems as though a tale of nuclear destruction echoes through Mohenjo-Daro, an event that occurred long before nuclear power and weapons were created. Still, the puzzle remains, leading to the uranium deposits found in Oklahoma, USA, interestingly, within Gabon, Africa. Back in 1972, workers in a uranium processing plant in France found a unique type of ore from the Okla mine that differs slightly from other deposits. Usually, uranium deposits contain approximately the same amount of uranium-235, around 0.72 thousandths of a percent of the material's mass. However, the variance in Oklahoma ore was only 3 thousandths of a percent, a tiny difference. Nonetheless, this variance was enough to remove about 200 units of uranium-235, sufficient to fuel almost five nuclear warheads. This trace of a distinct uranium isotope dates back about 2 billion years. It's theorized that this ore was composed of a staggering 3% uranium-235 at that time. The Okla mine could have turned into a natural nuclear reactor, with a cycle lasting about half an hour as groundwater flowed through it. Different theories suggest that the Indus civilization might have developed early forms of nuclear weaponry. This idea helps explain historical questions like why Mahenjo-Daro lacked fortifications or armies. Why build defenses or maintain large armies when a single weapon could wipe out an entire enemy force? More layers are added to this narrative with the discovery of a crater, a cavity, in a prominent Indus civilization city. 
This suggests the possibility of adversaries possessing nuclear weapons casting shadows on this ancient story. However, the tale of the Indus civilization's potential downfall remains a speculative idea carried on by waves of uncertainty. Nevertheless, scholars agree that deciphering the enigmatic scripts of that time holds the key to solving many mysteries. In the treasure trove of archaeology, ceramic tablets known as seals rest decorated with descriptions of animals, gods, and symbols. Their messages remain puzzling. In response, a reward of $10,000 has been offered to anyone who can decipher the Harapan script, which consists of around 50 characters. However, this script, full of cryptic codes, has resisted decipherment for over a decade. A variety of symbols, crafted by the hands of the Harapans, decorate numerous artifacts from metal trinkets to pottery. Among these symbols are animals and humans, forming a visual language that lives in history. Some speculate that these symbols might have been used as seals for trade. However, the script's brevity is puzzling, with inscriptions limited to only four or five symbols on small surfaces. This script has a much shorter history compared to the complex writings of other ancient civilizations. It only spans around 30 characters at its maximum. A gap exists where multilingual inscriptions fail to align. The Rosetta Stone, a key to understanding ancient Egyptian language, exemplifies the power of multilingualism. It helped translate Egyptian scripts using ancient Greek, bringing wisdom together. Across different eras, a narrative unfolds, telling of a natural nuclear reactor born from the Earth's depths. Nonetheless, the idea of an ancient nuclear war, while fascinating, is hindered by inconsistencies and fleeting evidence. It is a theory built on interpreting an ancient epic in a specific way and misunderstanding archaeological clues. This theory, like a whisper carried through time, clashes with history and archaeology experts and is considered a divergent idea that doesn't align with the established knowledge about the Indus Valley Civilization. This civilization achieved wonders, built monuments, and mastered the arts of its time without relying on nuclear power or warfare. The story of its birth, decline, and interactions with other cultures remain shrouded in ongoing debates and studies, but uncovering these mysteries does not necessitate the shadows of an ancient nuclear war. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you like this video, click on the screen to watch other videos like this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell to get notified when we post a new video.